Welcome, everybody. We will call to order the Grand Forks City Council meeting for Tuesday, September 6, 2022. Item 1.1, roll call, please, Maureen. Weigel. Here. Osowski. Here. Weber. Lunsky. Here. Gavami. Here. Sandy. Here. And Bean. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Item 1.2, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, item 1.3, got a few announcements, a couple of uh, exciting upcoming events. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, Ultra is going to place the final beam, so the hospital is at least at the height it's going to be, so pretty exciting. It's been a... It's taken a while, we've gone through COVID, but we're at least gonna be at that, uh, at that stage and on track to get the construction done. Greenway Takeover Festivals this weekend. Um, that'll be another exciting, that was a great time last year, family friendly um, event. The United Way is doing their trike wars coming up on Thursday um, this week. So thank you to Shields for hosting that. And the Potato Bowl's back. The French fry feed uh, will be back at University Park. So that's exciting, that's taken a couple year hiatus. With there, it's been a, a busy few weeks, uh, but happy to get uh, get going tonight. So with that, we're going to move on to item number two, which is citizen comments. So you'll have to bear with us. We've changed it up a little bit. Uh, if you've been paying attention the last couple weeks, expanded the time a little bit and moved it up in the agenda. And we've got a clock. John Bernstrom got us a clock. So everyone will be aware of the, the time and where we're at. So Sherry's going to list, list off the names. Um, then please come forward and, and feel free to speak as you wish. Jody Carlson. Oh, wait. Um, are we? Miss Carlson, if you're wishing to speak, please. Now's your time to speak, please. Good evening to y'all. Um, I, I just wanted to share with you that I was reviewing some things online this week as far as the community of Grand Forks, looking at some of the things that are going on in our community. Um, really, some really great things that are happening in our community, I, I have to say. I, I appreciate the growth. I appreciate the development. There's a lot of stuff going on with the Downtown Development Association. Um, so that made me very excited. But, and I also appreciate many people stepping up to serve. When I see people involved with the downtown development and what's going on, what's going on downtown. Um, I do have to say that with our council, um, that's where my disappointment lies, and that when secrets and lies start and they continue, then it becomes corruption. Because you're telling lies to cover up previous lies, and when do you ever get out of it? Until someone steps up and comes forward and says that this is not right. Um, I found out recently, last week, that the issue with the police department was not Officer Jennings, according to his own accord that came across my, my post and made a visit to my, to my home, that I did find out that it was actually ordered for him to make a visit to my home. Um, we hear lies about the equipment, we hear lies about the water, uh, lies about a lot of stuff. When does the truth start? Um, I have had a few former uh, city employees that have approached me that have talked about the corruption within the city and amongst the city council. Um, them having left for that reason after being, being employees for multiple years for the city, that they have left. They don't want their names being put out in the public. They want to be protected. God bless you, you uh, former city employees that had enough uh, strength to leave what you knew wasn't right. Um, I want to say coming across a letter from you, Mr. Bochensky, that went out to our governor where it says, and I don't think that people are aware of this, not only is there a 20-year pilot tax incentive that has been granted. We also need to think about the sales and use tax for a business that any supplies, construction equipment, et cetera, that will be tax exempt on that. 
And also, one thing that surprised me when I look back on that, also offering Fufang a five-year abatement of income taxes. That surprised me. I didn't realize that it was essentially going to be a, an entirely tax-free entity. Um, Grand Forks, another thing that surprised me that I read on the economic development page is that Grand Forks is a foreign trade zone, um, which indicates, and I don't understand this, and I'll probably ask more questions, but I'll just share what I read. Merchandise considered, anything that comes into Grand Forks, the merchandise is considered outside U.S. Customs territory. Uh, and in quotes, which I read directly from the site, it indicates foreign and domestic merchandise may be admitted into zones for designated operations without being subject to formal customs entry procedures. Um, products may not be subject to customs duties. Uh, and I'm not sure how that interacts with the Uyghur Forced Labor Act, because when it says that it kind of avoids the, the issue of, of customs. I'm not sure where that falls in with border security, um, but, but know that Fufang has said February 22nd of this year at a meeting, they did say that they would comply, and I know they're on hold right now. Um, I say this for the future, but they did say that they would comply with that Uyghur Forced Labor Protection Act. Um, do expect that to be accomplished if Fufang continues. Uh, I would also like to request that that, that be asked of uh, Cirrus Aircraft as well. Um, interesting thing on, and I'm not sure I'll probably have to talk with Mr. Lund about this. I'm not sure how ED, EDC sponsors work as far as having a sponsorship with the EDC if there is, uh, if that's like an investment of companies when people are sponsors of the EDC? Membership. A membership? So there's no financial interest for people that have sponsorship in that? Okay, that was one of my questions, thank you. Uh, questions on raw, word, raw water versus fresh water. Reading up a little bit on that you cannot use raw water on anything that is going to be made for either animal or human consumption. Uh, and also with the solid waste, my understanding is that that solid waste cannot go into a landfill. That, and, my, and again, my understanding is that that is the plan for the solid waste, what I've heard thus far. Um, the land sale, who initiated the land sale? Do, I mean, do we know? I, did Fufeng, I mean, there was no for sale signs. Thank you, Ms. Carlson. Thank you. Craig Spicer. Good evening, Mr. Council. Spicer, please. I'm sorry, what? Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I came tonight with a little bit more information. I, I gave uh, Mr. Phelan a, a protest that we gathered up um, 14 uh, signatures of the North 81 corridor that propose to stop the pond movement because we don't feel that it's right. I know they're voting on it tonight. We have, uh, we have uh, the Red River, which is just east of us, less than a quarter of a mile, a block uh, from me. We have the Cooley for drainage. We have uh, two main uh, highway arteries that have ditches on both sides for drainage. We have uh, the, uh, the uh, drainage ditch from the uh, flood protection plan. That's just north, probably less than a quarter of a mile. That's, that's more than sub subsequent drainage for any storms or anything that could be produced. We also put a new uh, pond in at the north end of uh, 42nd Street. So uh, the thing behind this is that this, uh, this pond is being brought in not for us, but it's being brought in for Fufang. So we believe that with the drainage that we've had prior years, no one has ever had any problems. Um, whether it's for future use or not, if it is, I don't think the people that are on the North Corridor should be paying for it. I think it should be all blended in with future people. I would like the council, somebody on the council, to make a motion to table the pond uh, for now until they gather more information. A uh, couple of other things on the annexation. We have another 
another problem that a lot of people don't see, and that's the, with the uh, 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 the, top, the, the uh, oldest landmark uh, farm uh, in, uh, in Grand Forks. Uh, and uh, that farm has not been annexed. And why, we don't know. Is it a buffer? Is it going to stay an island? Why, if this city was recommending that they annex that north end, why was that not all of that property annexed in instead of just the ones that are on the north side of uh, the Corinta farm? So that's a question I have. I want, to, I want it to be known that there's uh, quite a few acres out there that has not been annexed in. So why do they get off of this annexation and the rest of us are, are brought into the city? So those are the two things that I think should happen tonight. I believe that the mayor said in his interview that this project should come to a stop. Okay, does that mean you're stopped or does that mean Todd Phelan is the new mayor and he decides to proceed with these infrastructures and this pond movement? If you decide to stop this project, I believe the project should be stopped in full, not just in partition. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spicer. Frank Matichuk. <clears throat> Mr. Matichuk, please. Yeah, good evening. I just want to make two quick points. One thing I'd like to talk about, I've had a lot of education on CFIS lately. And looking over there, <clears throat> the way they do things, there are four main points that they ask for. And I won't bore you with all of them, but I'll read one and four because I think they're important. Number one is a purchase, lease, or concession by any or to a foreign person of real estate located in a proximity to any sensitive government facilities. Okay. Two and three talk about people being involved with the organizations and being on board of directors and have voting shares or whatever, and I won't bore you with that. Number four, though, says any other transaction, transfer, agreement, or arrangement designed to circumvent CFIS jurisdiction is not allowed. So I just want to make those two things clear. Uh, I'd also like to bring up one other quick point. I'm going to try to make the record here and do it in two minutes if I can. Anyway, I'd also like to bring up the point that your advisory committee, which was the Planning and Zoning Commission, had made a motion that if Fufung did not come, they didn't want to do the annexation. If Fufung was developed, materialized, then they wanted to go ahead with the annexation. Now, I know you guys can overrule that, but I think you ought to take a look at what your own planning and zoning did. So with that, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Matichek. Dennis Cadillac. <clears throat> Mr. Cadillac, please. Thank you. Are you going to answer any questions today? Uh, the council can certainly answer questions if they so choose. Well, I'd like Mr. to know Cadillac. if the council agrees with uh, Mr. Sandy's opinion of Major Fox, Major Jerry Lee Fox. Does the council agree with Mr. Sandy's opinion of him? He's a de decorated, highly recognized, honored military man of this country. He helps protect our freedom, which China would like to have, because communism has no God and they have no freedom. So if you choose China, you're choosing a godless entity. And if you're not going to answer my questions here, I suggest you write them down, because somebody will be coming along answering, asking the same questions we're asking tonight, and you will answer those, to those people. And Mr. Mayor, I, I would think that you understand what that is. And, you know, are we paying for those videos? You know, those videos could have been much better done than they were. But, you know, this stuff is going on all the time. And, you know, if you take a look at that chess set and you go online and look at it, you'll find out where that comes from. And, and, and that you'd even be involved with that just amazes me. Because it's very obvious what the whole idea behind them is. But then when you're godless, you're godless. And when you're godless, you have not much knowledge, not much wisdom. You know, you might know a few things, but that's it. And that's the one thing I felt in here, every time I come in here, 
is the evil that emanates from this realm. Talk about being scared. I'm shaking right now. You guys are the scariest people I know. You, you are willing to endanger this city, the people of this city, even this country, and this nation. That flag stands for this republic. This is a republic. Please treat it as such. You know, the Bitcoin mining in this town is, is going fantastic. You know, you guys don't ever talk about that. But you guys must be approving it because the biggest buildings are right behind your buildings. Like your new water treatment plant, one of the biggest Bitcoin operations right there is right on the side of that. Tucked away very neatly, by the way. They have more security than our armory does. Uh, there's another Bitcoin mining operation that I went and looked at behind your city shop. That another one, really well hidden by that shop in those trees. But you know, I started out believing there were three. Now I'm told there's six. And you know, the same person that sold you land that's housing materials for this Fulfang development, I understand there's Bitcoin operating there also. And you know, the Bitcoin is losing so much money, this is why they had to double our gas and our electric prices to help those people compensate. But they're borrowing monies from our bank that they're not gonna be able to pay back and the banks are gonna collapse. And I want the people of this city to know that you people are behind this, that you know that this is going on. A matter of fact, you're the ones that approve these Bitcoin operations here in town. How much tax are they paying? Are they paying their fair share? I'll bet you they're not paying the same amount for electricity the rest of us are. And you know we've had more power failures in the last six months than we had in the last 30 years. How is that possible? But it's happening. And there's a lot of other things happening around here that you people wish to sweep under the table. And you know, it's only thanks to your stubbornness that I wind up finding these things out. Until I started coming to these meetings, I didn't know about half the stuff you people do. But now I can't keep up. I can research 20 hours a day and still never catch up to you guys. You're moving so fast, nobody can keep up other than a branch of our federal government. And that's why they have them. They're called Cephas. And they'll do the job that we can't do, that you people are unwilling to do. And so I thank the Lord for that. And you don't know them evidently because you guys are part of a godless society. You back communism. And communism, as I said earlier, has no God. They control. Our God allows us freedom. Freedom of choice. And you people have made your choice. And remember this, when the day comes, and it's going to be sooner here than you know, because the good Lord's coming again, thank the Lord. And the sooner the better at the rate you people are making this world. Thank you, Mr. Cadillac. Diane Hoverson. Sorry, Diane Hoverson. I'll take your time. It's really hard to hear way back there. We're working on that. That's that's been an issue. Miss Overson, please. Thank you. It's great to be here. I grew up in Manville, and uh, then moved away for many, many, many years. Moved to Washington, and then moved to uh, Arizona. And now I'm back in Grafton. And I know I you probably think, what am I doing here? But you know this project really. Uh, is a part of the whole uh, state of North Dakota. And uh, when I was in South uh, last April, or August, so I can't even think of what I'm gonna do here. Um, last year in January, when I first started seeing all these things on the internet while I was out of the, out of the area, and I just, it, it, I just couldn't believe what I was reading. It was just sickening to me. And so ever since then, I've been following everything that's been going on. And I want to personally thank the gentleman who started the petition. I know I can't say his name correctly, so I don't want to you know, do that wrongly. But he is a person that we should be very proud of, along with our senators, who um, I thought had the best line was, you know, let's move on. So because I am from Washington uh, for many years, I am representing uh, Costco because I've written in the newspaper about Costco, 
and I went down to Fargo and talked with the general manager down there and I said we really need a Costco up in Grand Forks and he asked me about all the things that were here already and he said well we're going to have a meeting and we're going to be doing some long-term plans so I went down there talked to him this week and he said Grand Forks is in the top 50 they're going to put 50 new Costco's in the Midwest and because we don't have one and we're losing money our people that have put all their lives into the hotels into the food industries here he said my parking lot in Fargo is full of Canadians and they're just bypassing Grand Forks and you know they I think they've only been there two and a half years they've paid for everything their building is paid for everything is paid for that's how much money they're making they're putting another Costco in Fargo because they're so busy I was there on a Monday morning at 1030 the parking lot was totally jammed on a Monday morning at 1030 they just can't keep up with all the people that want to be at, go to Costco that would be the best thing that ever happened to Grant Forks it would bring those people down from up north and get back to our community I don't know anybody that wants to go shopping at a corn mill and that's all I have to say, but thank you very much. Thank you. Michael Coachman. Mr. Coachman, please, sir. Hello, City Council. Uh, it's good to talk to seeing everybody. Um, I want to thank Mr. Sander and um, individuals who were emailing with me the last couple days. Uh, Mr. Gostad, are you going to respond to my questions anytime soon? I did. Check your this, email. Was that recently? No, as far as the employees of Fufang. Check, check your email, Mr. Coachman. Okay. All right, thank you. So as I was saying, I was um, having a conversation with them, and some of the questions that I was asking was, who was the individuals that was with, working with Mr. Godstead and what law firms? The other question I had was what law firm or firms and individuals were working with Fufang? And that was getting to kind of a, I guess, heated conversation with me and Mr. Sandys here. So I was like, what is the problem? I'm just asking some questions. You know, um, how were people involved? Why was Mr. Quinn, the law firm, um, he was talking on different issues as far as the Constitution. So I'm asking these questions, and I get this response today. I was really kind of surprised. It says, Mr. Coachman, I find your response and continued questions personal and certainly particular in nature. It is Mr. Gosset's responsibility to know who represent those with those who do contracts, not mine. I mean, I would still be involved in what was going on. It is my responsibility to make sure Mr. Gostet mitigate the city risk and get the best deal possible. I believe we both know our roles and are following through with our duties. Also, I was asking um, some other questions, and he goes, I say particular in nature as you represent yourself as an educated person with regards to constitutional law, yet you make statements and present them as facts. The facts I was asking is what when you say you don't want individuals to be on an agenda, I ask what codes or what policies, why, not your personal opinion. That's what I was asking, which you did not get, come back with, but you come back with this. And to the contrary, I've been asking to email questions and only engage with it as rapid as possible. You are afforded five minutes during our meeting to express your opinion. To the contrary, Mr. Coachman, as you, in your opinions, represented as facts, which threatened to undermine our republic. Hmm. I deal in facts. You do? You haven't gave, I got sheets where you have not dealt with facts. You should attempt to do the same. I have. Mind of fact, I stand on this. Do you? I know I do. When it comes to facts, when it's finding out the duties of the, uh, picking out a uh, attorney, Yes, I was on the city council, and we did look for other different uh, law firms. Matter of fact, 
some of the people that were on our city council and Laramore back in the day are now judges throughout the state. Just to let you know, we just don't pick any judge I mean, or any attorney to represent us. We do look at other attorneys. That's what I was asking. Why did you pick this? Why did you do this? And the question, and I, if you already sent it, I don't have it in this here, I asked for the names of the individuals that were working with you. The name of the individuals. Your response was, with the Foo Fang, I don't care. And I said, your personal opinion really doesn't matter. Yeah, I got it here, I know. Maybe it was a time you blacked out or something, I don't know. But I have it right here. So my question is, I am threatening the Republic. For some reason, that statement when I read that, sounded like this guy just heard Thursday night on the TV. How am I threatening the Republic? I'm asking questions. I'm standing on the Constitution. Everything I'm doing is based on why you're doing it. Now, if you don't like to be challenged, that's OK. But to say, I'm on the mining republic, I don't think so. I bet you, and this was just asking me today, just today about 2 o'clock, <clears throat> I challenge you my passport against your passport at the next city council on who's been to more constitutional states. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coachman. Sean Beauclair. Mr. Beauclair, please. Good evening, Council. Thank you for having me once, uh, once again. Um, why should you listen to me? Good question. Why? I'd like to talk about my track record. I told you about the corn basis. You ignored me. I told you about Fu Feng. Pay attention to what they're not telling you. You continue to ignore me. That's coming back to bite you. I told you about Cepheus. Mr. Sandy, you basically laughed in my face. So here we are today where Cepheus is the reason why you're listening to us. So today, I have four things, basically. I'd like to talk about hearing versus listening product market fit, and a short Ronald Reagan modified story to make my point. So verse, hearing versus listening, I feel a lot of us, the people behind us, you heard us, but you didn't listen to us. You didn't follow up on our questions. You didn't follow us from the concern. And I think there's probably 100 plus questions that haven't been answered. And it wasn't until Cepheus stepped in that now our questions are being answered. So that's a very positive thing. The other thing I'd like to talk about is, is a risk. One of the members of the audience asked me to pose this question. Are you still employing the DC law firm? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Yes. If so, has she made you aware of the possible consequences of continuing to do work related to this project? If the federal government decides to do so, they can do, undo all the aspects of this project, including annexation. The city would be responsible for all costs to remedies any work done to this point. So not a question to be answered now. I'm sure a lot of us would be appreciated if that question was answered. Our law firm will be later. Law firm will be later. Okay, moving, moving on, when I talked about product market fit, I've got to get my persuasion hat on since I don't have CFS on my business card to get you to listen to me. I also appreciate the smile there. Anyway, last time we talked about UND, right? Grand Forks Air Force Base have an excellent fit in community, two government agencies. I'd like to talk about your businesses I admire in this community, Rydell, Hugo's, Strata Corporation, Acme Tools, including Whitman's Chocolates. So I have actually have a gift for you, right? Product market fit. Think about what those businesses represent, honesty, integrity, homegrown, some of the best things in this community. Look how Fu Fung has engaged with you. Have they been honest? Have they been transparent? Have they looked out for the best interests of the community? Pretty straightforward. Would any of those businesses involved with Fu Fung, would they choose to put a corn wet mill inside of the city limits? I, I think the answer would be a resounding no. 
It doesn't belong in the community of Grand Forks, doesn't belong in North Dakota, doesn't belong in the United States. One individual that I, I have a, an ask of you, Mr. Mayor, regarding, and there's an individual that spoke here on February 7th. His first name was Ray. He, he's an American. He served his country. He got a citizenship, by the way. I don't know if you remember him. He happens to be from China, him and his mother. He gave a very touching story in, about a movement. I listened to it a number of times. If there's one individual that spoke here I think we can all learn from would be to spend some time with him. My ask is, I'll leave a check, not a check, $20 bill for you, simply to have lunch with him, Mr. Mayor, if that would be acceptable to you. Yeah, you can't pay for it though, Mr. Beclair. We'll figure it out. Clarify that this is for him, for his yeah. lunch, you're a successful business person, ex Right? Would that be acceptable to buy? You can pay for his lunch. Yeah, I think I'll that, pay for his lunch. I think he lives right next to uh, Councilmember Kavami, so they know each other well. So I'm sure we can work something out. All right, fantastic. Final comment about the Ronald Reagan modified story. Ronald Reagan told a story one time about two ethnic groups, a bird and a fight. The birds were were chickens, right? Roosters is called a cockfight, right? When two roosters fix, think of Miss Martial Arts. So the story goes, how do you identify the Grand Forks Council, Grand Forks City Man at the cockfight? They're the one with the duck, right? How do you know Fu Fung is present? They're the one betting on the duck. How do you know the Chinese Communist Party is present? The duck wins, right? It doesn't belong here. Thankfully for us, now you're still holding a duck, Mr. Phelan, but no longer you're taking a duck to a cockfight, you're taking a, a duck to fight with, with a gun. And the guns will be Cepheus. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beclair. That's all the comments I have. All right. Appreciate everybody's comments this evening. Moving on to three awards, presentations, appointments, and proclamations. 3.1 is the National Assisted Living Week, September 11th through 17th, 2022. Thank you. Whereas the number of elderly and disabled Americans is dramatically increasing, and whereas assisted living is a long-term care service that fosters choice, independence, and autonomy to our elderly nationwide, and whereas the National Center for Assisted Living proudly created National Assisted Living Week, and whereas the theme of National Assisted Living Week 2022, Joyful Moments, highlights the opportunity to bestow on our residents a multitude of events and activities that show them how much we care for and love them. Now, therefore, I, Brandon Bochinski, the mayor of Grand Forks, North Dakota, proclaim the week of September 11th, the 17th, 2022, as National Assisted Living Week in Grand Forks, North Dakota. I urge all citizens to visit friends and loved ones who reside at these facilities and also to learn more about the assisted living services and how they benefit our community. 3.2 is a Fu Fang due diligence update. Thank you. you got this, Mr. Yes, Phelan, please. Do. Mayor Bachinski and uh, members of City Council, this evening we have a, um, a few updates we're going to provide to you. Mr. Gosted and Mr. Kimball from the Cooley Law Firm, they're going to give you uh, a couple of legal updates. Um, I'm going to give uh, a, an infrastructure update um, from our last community hall. I also have um, Eric Shooterash is here this evening too, and he's going to provide you an update uh, regarding Fufang USA. And then finally, the Mayor uh, Bochinski has followed up from our last raw water supply update and and we've asked mr Beering to be here from Beering and associates giving an update on some of the raw raw water supply because that's kind of an ongoing uh, concern that people bring up so with that i'd hand it back over to mr gosted and and we'll go from there thank you mr Phelan. uh mr mayor and, and members of the council um since our last meeting um judge fowdy issued a, a decision in the petition um uh, ballot uh, case, the mandamus case, the, the remaining uh, decision that was, or the remaining case that was outstanding. Just want to give an update. Uh, there, as you know, there were two cases that that were started. One was an appeal, uh, appeal of a local governing body decision, the appeal of Mr. Stead's decision. That case had been dismissed back in uh, August 11th uh, because there was no statute or ordinance that allowed for the appeal, and because of that fact. Uh, there was no jurisdiction for the court to hear that particular case. Um, judgment has been entered, dismissed in the case, and the notice of entry of the judgment was served uh, back on August 15th, which starts the uh, appeal period for that particular case. Um, 
with respect to the mandamus case, uh, again, it was the same uh, uh, matter with respect to the petition to put the uh, put it to a citywide vote. Um, as you know, there's a hearing on August 18th of 2020. Uh, Judge Foudy issued uh, his decision on August 26th of 2022. Uh, what that did is it denied the re the petitioner's requested relief to mandate a vote and for an injunction, and granted the city's motion for summary judgment that in turn resulted in the dismissal of the action. Um, on September 1st, judgment was entered dismissing all of the petitioner's claims with prejudice, and notice of entry judgment was served on that date as well, which again starts the appeal period for that particular action. I'll just briefly go through the decision that was issued uh, last week by Judge Foudy. Um, what he did is, if you recall, there were five reasons uh, set forth in Ms. Dorstead's uh, decision to deny the petition as being not sufficient to put it to a citywide vote. What the court did is he went through each and every one of those uh, 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 bases that were set forth in Ms. Uh, Storstead's. The first was that uh, the matter wasn't referable because it was an administrative decision. Um, the court determined that that was not a proper basis to find that the petition was insufficient, uh, citing to a North Dakota Supreme Court case. Um, I want I couch that in terms of uh, the court also went through uh, later on, and we'll talk about it, it that um, the contract clause in both the U.S. and North Dakota constitutions became a legal barrier to refer contracts. Um, so it's, it's a little bit part and parcel, but uh, that administrative matter was found not to be a proper basis. But as, as we'll talk about with respect to the contract clause, uh, that is a legal barrier to referring contracts. Uh, the second reason that was set forth uh, was there was an inclusion of two or more distinct and unrelated questions in the petition. Uh, the court found that that was, in fact, a proper basis to find the petition was insufficient. Um, in the filings by the petitioners in the case, they uh, contended that both the development agreement and the task orders were to be voted on. Um, the, the court noted that the development agreement was an entirely separate contract, separate from the task order contracts. In fact, the court noted that the, the development agreement was, there was a, a motion for that, and then a separate motion for the task order agreements. And the court said the task orders are distinguishable from the development agreement uh, because some task orders dealt with studies, some for design, some for uh, what the court described as dissimilar infrastructure items. And because of that fact, that both items were were being, as the petitioners noted in their in their briefing, uh, in the case that both the development agreement and the task orders are to be voted on. Now you're asking the voters to vote on two distinct questions, um, and and therefore the court concluded that that was a proper basis uh, to determine that the petition was insufficient. Uh, the next was uh, the basis was that. Uh, there was exclusion, inclusion of extraneous materials within the petition. This was an alternative uh, argument in that if the development agreement uh, and the task orders weren't uh, uh, being asked to be voted on, then, and it was only the development agreement, then information about the task orders within the petition was extraneous. Uh, and that was, that was a basis for uh, denying or finding that the petition was insufficient. Given the fact that the court had had previously, and we just talked about that, the task orders and the development agreement were both being asked to be uh, discussed, it almost became mooted in that uh, it's no longer extraneous because the task orders were within the petition. The next uh, basis the court went through, or Ms. Storstead uh, indicated in her memo, was that there was a failure to include the full text of the matter being referred. Uh, the court found that that was a proper basis to find the petition was insufficient. Uh, the court noted that none of the agreements were attached. Uh, the court also said that the, the emissions, those emissions resulted in confusion. In fact, the court even noted that it was unclear looking at the language on the petition as to whether it was intended to impact the task orders as well. Um, the court also noted that the voters, or the, those that signed, had to rely upon representations of the petitioners. And those that were signing the petition may have thought a vote would stop the Fufang project. 
And the court also noted that both parties concurred that whether there is a vote up or down with the development agreement would not definitely result in, in the stopping of the Fufung project. Finally, uh, the last uh, uh, reason for uh, the uh, finding of the petition being insufficient was that the, there was an omission of the names and affidavits on every single signature page. Uh, the court found that that was not a proper basis to find the petition insufficient, uh, stating that it was clear who was circulating the petition. Um, the significant uh, ruling also talked about, or the significant part of this decision was the contract clause. Uh, under the U.S. and North Dakota constitutions, laws can't be enacted that would impair existing contract obligations. Um, those, con those constitutional provisions became legal barriers uh, to the petition, the vote, uh, and, and this is the reason why, is that uh, when you refer a matter through this voting process, the people through the vote are really acting as a legislature in that, in that, in that regard. And since the legislature can't act to violate a constitutional provision, neither can the people through a vote violate or, or cause a violation of the, of the Constitution. The court noted that the Home Rule Charter can't be used as a shield to, uh, uh, as a shield from an unconstitutional act. Um, and in effect, the petitioners were arguing that if the development agreement was voted down, it would effectively wipe the agreements away uh, as if they never existed. Um, and the court said that that, that impaired the contracts by simply uh, causing it to be wiped away under the development agreement. And the court noted that it really becomes a futile act in that if, the, if you put this to a vote and it's unconstitutional, it, could, it can't be implemented. Likewise, if you put it to a vote and the development agreement is voted up uh, or in favor, all they're doing is reaffirming what the city council has already done. So you're, you're, under both scenarios, it becomes a futile act. Uh, and so at the end of the day, the court uh, ruled in favor of the city um, in, the, in, in both of the cases with respect to the petition. The only other case that's outstanding uh, right now uh, is the Cadillac. Uh, brought in a, uh, a case uh, seeking to uh, have a restraining order issued with respect to the annexation of the property that was done. The theory is uh, Mr. Cadillac owns underneath Highway 81. Uh, he should have been provided notice. Um, the briefing's already been done. Um, I believe if you do the math, I don't even think if you added Mr. Uh, Cadillac's property, it wouldn't change the numeric as far as the 25% criteria. Uh, but there is a hearing on October 3rd of 2022 in front of Jun Judge Hager uh, on the motion for a restraining order. So with that, um, I'll answer any questions with respect to the pending cases. Any questions for Mr. Gostad? All right, seeing none, please continue, Mr. Phelan. Uh, Mr. Gostad, I think we have Mr. Kimball. Well, it looks like he's online, and I think he was going to get provide the next briefing on the CFIUS um, matter. Yes, and it, just to, for introductory purposes, uh, Chris Kimball is with the Cooley Law Firm. Uh, he's here presenting because uh, Ms. Ryan King is on maternity leave, uh, and Mr. Kimball is actually uh, uh, Ms. Ryan King's superior uh, partner in the Cooley Law Firm. So. I'll turn it over to Mr. Kimball is to discuss the recent uh, uh, letter that was issued by CFIUS that was uh, provided or dated August 31st of 2022. Okay, this is Chris speaking. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Well, um, um, good evening, good afternoon, uh, Mayor and, and Council. Um, I want to talk briefly about the August 31 letter and then give the, the council and the mayor a chance to ask me questions. This is basically a process letter. Right? It comes from CFIUS, the uh, Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, which is charged with reviewing the national security implications of certain transactions. And while this, is, uh, this letter is full of, of regulatory citations and, and legalese, what it basically says is that the committee, CFIUS, would like more time and more information to consider the uh, corn milk project. Now, um, for a little bit of context, Fu Feng um, voluntarily notified CFIUS of the proposed 
project and was seeking uh, clearance, right, permission from the government to proceed, or at least a determination as to whether um, CFIUS had the authority to review the transaction. Um, now, the initial review process of that voluntary filing has completed, right? The government has 30 days to review the filing, which is called the declaration. With that process concluded, um, the government has a couple of options. They can, they can approve the transaction. Um, they can neither approve it nor ask for more information, or they can do what they've done here, which is actually quite common, and that's to ask the parties uh, Fang, to provide additional information in the form of uh, what we call a notice. I and mean, a notice is just a, a regulatory term for a more comprehensive and more detailed filing. Right? More information about Fufeng, more information about their owners, folks who make decisions, uh, the project generally. Now, the process for reviewing a notice is very similar to the process for reviewing the initial filing, which is called the declaration. Uh, one difference, however, is that the review period is a little bit longer. Right? So instead of 30 days, the government would have 40 days and then potentially another 45 days. So what we have here, um, in short, is a letter to Fufeng's lawyers, right, law firm Lock Lord in Washington, saying, basically, thank you for the initial information. We'd like more. And they're asking Fufeng's lawyers, do you intend to provide more information to us? Do you intend to go through this process um, and extend the review? Now, Fufeng can decide to continue to cooperate to go through this process um, uh, further, or they can decide, no, we're not interested in doing that. Um, thank you very much. Um, if the answer is the latter, we're not interested in providing more information, CFIUS has some authority to initiate that process on its own, although they won't have the benefit of the cooperation of the parties. So um, my expectation, based on communications with Fufeng's lawyers, is that they do intend to cooperate and submit another filing. I don't know that that's the final decision, but that's, um, to the best of my knowledge, where we'll end up based on um, statements that they've made about their interest in co continuing to cooperate. So if that is, in fact, the plan uh, on Fufeng's part, my expectation is that they would signal, right, respond to this letter and say, yes, we intend to um, submit a notice right, more comprehensive filing, and, <clears throat> excuse me, typically that process involves um, a little bit of work on Fufeng's part. I would expect that it would take them maybe a matter of a couple of weeks to gather all of the relevant information, um, and then they would be submitting that information to the government who would accept it and start um, a, a regulatory clock, so to speak. So if, if that is in fact the path, my expectation is that this review process by CFIUS would last, let's say, between um, 75 days and uh, a matter of months. So big picture, um, government is interested in the transaction. The government is interested in learning more about it. And if Fufeng is inclined to um, cooperate further, we're probably looking at a review process lasting a number of months. Um, let me pause there and see if there are questions uh, based on that. Any questions from Council? No, please continue, continue Mr. Kimball. Um, so, taking another step back, when we first talked to the city about this issue, the city's, one of the city's questions was, well, does CFIUS really have authority to look at this transaction? And um, one of the, the gentleman's comments this evening focused on two um, strands of, of the government's authority, the government's jurisdiction to look at these transactions. One, uh, he noted, was with respect to leases of real property and their proximity to uh, facilities of interest, right, military bases, Grand Forks Air, For uh, Grand Forks Air Force Base. Um, and he also mentioned uh, transactions that were intended or designed to circumvent 
um, the government's jurisdiction. The, the other the other basis of CFIUS's authority to review transactions is um, is when you have a transaction involving a foreign person acquiring a U.S. business. So one of the questions out of the gate that the city asked was, is this project something that CFIUS really has authority to look at? And our view on that is probably no. Um, and I can get into the rationale for that if that's of interest uh, to the council. I know that you may have seen our memoranda on the issue, but I'm happy to, to recap that now if that's helpful for this discussion. Please. Yeah, please. Okay, so we have Fu Fang, right, foreign person, acquiring real property in Grand Forks. Real property without any improvements upon it is not a U.S. business, right? So if we're thinking about the, the authority of the government, the authority of CFIUS to review uh, a transaction involving a foreign person, Fu Feng, we think that it's not likely that the government would conclude that Fu Feng has acquired a U.S. business here. They've acquired real property. They haven't acquired property building on it that has um, improvements on it. So our view is that um, there's probably not a legal basis for CFIUS to conclude that Fu Feng acquired a business. And if that's the case, CFIUS would not have authority to review the project on that basis. Going back to the issue of leases of land and proximity to sensitive facilities, the way that the CFIUS regulations are written um, focuses on leases of real property in certain specific proximity to certain specific facilities. And when we look at the distance between the proposed project and, say, Grand Force Air Force Base um, and other facilities that are actually enumerated in the regulations, we find that there really isn't a matchup between a particular facility that's listed in the regulations um, and the location of the plant for purposes of establishing the government's authority to look at the project under that uh, aspect of the government's jurisdiction. So our sense, right, Cooley's sense, my sense as a CFIUS practitioner, is that CFIUS will, is interested in looking at this and would like to develop more facts, would like to understand more about Fu Feng and the project, but I suspect that at the end of the day, the government lawyers will determine that they don't have authority to review the transaction formally and that therefore they will not have authority to uh, block the project from proceeding. Now, there may be facts um, that the government um, is, is seeking to develop that um, could influence the final decision, but based on the facts as we understand them, our expectation is that the government will decide, CFIUS will decide that it doesn't have authority at the end of the day to review the transaction and to uh, address the perceived national security concerns with it. So what about number four, intend to uh, circumvent uh, the regulations? How would that apply? That was one of the questions. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I, don't, I don't see, I'm not aware of facts that would suggest that the, um, that the transaction was structured in a way to circumvent um, the jurisdiction of the committee. When, when we see circumvention type situations, we're talking about um, you know, standing of a dummy U.S. corporation, right, to make an acquisition. So it doesn't look like there's a foreign person. There's something underhanded um, about it. And here, um, my, my guess, right, my sense of how the government would look at this is that there is a, an open um, and I call it transparent in, in certain ways um, acquisition of real property without subterfuge as to the acquisition. So I don't see that the facts um, that would suggest that the government could, could avail itself of this circumvention theory. Um, again, the government looking at this, the committee may have information that is not available to us, but that's my read of the facts as I understand them. Okay, I guess I got one more question and I'll open it up to um, council for more. So if CFIUS does go through this process and finds jurisdiction and unwinds the, the, the project or unwinds the land sale, what is the next step? Are they 
Do they have recourse beyond making the company sell the land, or what would their uh, recourse be at that point? I mean, we're t do they have the ability to unwind uh, local governing bodies' uh, actions when it relates to um, annexation or other items? So if we assume that CFIUS concludes that it has jurisdiction to review the project, um, the, the committee would have authority to do what it needed to do to address its perceived national security concerns. So in this case, right, one of the concerns is espionage, right, um, uh, signals intelligence collection, things like that. Um, the government would have broad authority to prohibit the transaction from proceeding. It could, for example, require Fruit Fang to sell the property. It wouldn't require the sellers to give the money back, but it could require Fu Fang to sell the real property on a schedule. Um, it could also do other things that it felt necessary to mitigate the national security issue. So um, the simplest way to resolve the issues may be, in the government's mind, simply requiring um, the sale to be unwound, in which case there would be nothing uh, for the city to really do with respect to the development. Any questions? You, are you, uh, have you concluded, Mr. Kimball, your comments? Do you want to open up to some questions from Council? I'm happy to take questions, yes. All right. Uh, President Sandy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kimball. Uh, appreciate you standing in tonight. Um, I'm wondering if you could discuss Cepheus and their mission. I, uh, is, is Cepheus, is the mission of Cepheus purely for the economic development of the country? Or is their mission to find jurisdiction related to national security issues? Sure, let me, let me see if I can get my camera on. Um, that's helpful. So the, the mission of the committee um, is to address national security issues really narrowly. Um, the, the government operates, the US government operates under an open investment policy, but CFIUS is not concerned with economic development really one way or the other. So the way that the committee looks at this issue is, is solely through a national security lens. So, so as a follow-up, they're, they're, they're attempting, they're actually trying to find jurisdiction. They're working hard to try to find jurisdiction so that they can make sure to cover the national security interests of our country. Is that a correct statement? I would say that um, in any matter that's brought to Cepheus's attention through a filing of the type that Fu Feng did, the, the lawyers at the Treasury Department, which is the chair of the committee, will make a determination as to whether they have jurisdiction to review it. Now, obviously, um, people in government will have an opinion, a preliminary opinion about potential national security issues, and will hope that the government will find jurisdiction. Um, but, but the inquiry is initially focused on jurisdiction. If there is jurisdiction, they'll pursue and develop the facts relevant to the national security issues. Yes. Thank, thank you, Mr. Kimball. All right, any further questions from Council? What? Uh, Mr. Veen, please. Just uh, while the question, even if they don't have jurisdiction, could we still request that they do an inquiry? Well, um, in, no, um, not, not formally and not in a way that would result in mitigation of perceived issues. The, the government, CFIUS, can only act um, to address security issues if it has um, jurisdiction. So um, I think that the short answer is no there. Um, they won't have authority to do anything about uh, the transaction if we don't first established jurisdiction. All right, any further comments? Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Kimball. I'm sure we'll have uh, some follow-up with you uh, in the near future. So thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Mr. Mayor, Phelan, please. Yeah, Mayor Bochanski, I'm, I'm going to be joined by Mr. Shooter Ash from Fufang USA. So we're going to, uh, next item, we're going to talk about the Fufang slash Highway 81 annexation area. And, and Mayor, we briefed this at the Committee of the Whole, and I just want to provide some updates from um, when we last spoke um, regarding our, our request to uh, moving forward.
Cheryl, there we go. Thank you. Um, the mayor discussed earlier, you know, we did get the CFIUS letter and that we're, we're going to pause on some of the construction activities specifically related to Fufong. And, and when I was here a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were looking at the various aspects of what really sp um, relates to Fufong in particular in the industrial area. And I just want to point out those areas when we talk about construction. Um, construction related to Fufong are these um, improvements that we have proposed along Highway 2 um, in these locations and 81 to include along 27. So as I, as I discussed, we have had meetings with the North Dakota DOT and they have committed that they would help support um, if, on design and also um, capital improvements um, from a funding um, um, particular on these three areas, knowing that they are state highways. Um, we're going to work through the particulars, but as you recall, as part of the traffic study, Fu Fang drove these improvements, and they were generally turn lanes, whether um, in these in these intersections. So, those would be physical improvements if the Fu Fang project did not move forward we would not ask the North Dakota DOT to move forward with those improvements because those improvements were specifically related to the Fu Fong plant itself. We would ask um, at some point next year if we did get a, a, um, a, a note where the Fu Fong project is not going to move forward, we would let the DOT know, please don't bid those um, projects next spring for um, next summer's construction because we don't need those particular improvements at this point in time. The other projects that we're working on currently with that relate specifically to Fufong is the, the intake, which is down by the, the forks of the river here, the Red River and the Red Lake River. And that, that's when we talked about some additional pumps in this pump station and some um, ancillary improvements. Number two is a, a pump station out by our, our new water treatment plant. And then these two dual lines that would go to not only to Fufong, but this agribusiness um, park area and so those are that's another project we're working with the state of North Dakota in this case we're working with the North Dakota Department of Water Resources and, and currently right now under a design um, agreement they're they're funding um, up to 60 percent of that design um, for the raw water the other thing that relates to Fufong is this industrial pump station which is located um, right here and and that's to serve Fufong and then there's a force main that goes out to our wastewater treatment plant. And when uh, Mr. Bergen from WFW was here last week, this industrial wastewater pump station will initially serve the Fufong site, but will also serve other industries in our area. Um, the noted Corinta area that's currently under an annexation agreement, we, we would think within, um, within some time period that's going to become additional agribusiness. Um, it would be able to serve that area, this industrial pump station, and then J.R. Simplot, Red River Biorefiner are down in this area. So that would be a size to a point where um, it would also serve these other adjacent industries in that area. The other thing is that the wastewater treatment plant, um, as you noted, that we are looking at certain capacities. That's another citywide project, but there's some scale. We may not be, build it to a certain size if yeah, Fufang project doesn't move forward. We're, we are going to make some improvements. We are going to make some expansions, but we may not make as many of them if Fufang doesn't move um, forward. So as part of this, when we briefed this last time and we talked about specifically construction, when we were working as a city administrative team and, and with uh, Mayor Bachensky, we were looking at how, how, how prudently would it be to move forward with construction in anticipation of it was going to be a challenge to start uh, fall construction in anticipation of that we were probably going to get a notice from CFIUS that there'd be some further information required, some further uh, uncertainty, that it would make sense to move forward with bid dates and construction to the spring of next year. So as you look at these various projects, whether it's the raw water facilities, we have bid dates, um, and uh, proposed summer construction of 23. So those, bid, those would be bid in, in March of 2023. And so we would continue through design, but no construction on those particular um, projects. The other projects I think that we're going to have to have some discussion on are relate to the wastewater treatment plant. And you can see where we do have some um, earlier construction dates yet this fall. 
and some of it relates to the deep foundation and structures package. And so some of those are, um, what does that package look like? Um, do we need to build that all out? Those are some things that we're gonna have to consider as part of the design and, and would wanna engage with the city council as part of that. That's a to be determined. Again, when you look at down here, number six, raw water in the industrial force main and the sanitary lift station 50, which is that industrial pump station, those are all scheduled for bidding um, in March of 2023. So we would, we're, we're not gonna be in construction on those projects. I would say the one note we're gonna come back to in the wastewater treatment plant, we need to move forward, but maybe the scale of that we may have to, may have to consider. And then as you go down the future task orders that we have not brought forward to you, you can see that mo all of those are really further off into 23 and into 24. Some of that relates to the raw water. It relates to the industrial force main that would relate more specifically to Fufang um, as we move forward. This evening it has been a discussion is what we're asking for, and Mr. Mr. I have asked Mr. Shurash to come here and not only give up, give an update out regarding the Fufan project, we get, we've been giving you a lot of updates on the support infrastructure before Mr. Shooter has to give an update on where they're at with design and, and construction activities. I just wanna point out that Mr. Shooter has asked the city of Grand Forks to continue on with um, planning and design work for, uh, for the wastewater treatment plant, um, for the, uh, the industrial pump station, um, for the raw water and not construction, but for, for the design and planning of those. Um, they do know, and Mr. Shurash will confirm this, they do know that they are at some risk. They do have a $5 million letter of credit. And so certainly if we go through design and we don't get to bidding and construction for whatever reason, um, we will have, uh, they will have spent uh, significant sums. They will have uh, put at jeopardy their $5 million letter of credit because we will have continued to work on those particular projects as part of that. We did engage with Fufang USA because we just don't, we wanted to make them aware of that. But currently right now, um, you know, we certainly got a briefing from our law firm. I suspect they're getting briefings from their law firm. They feel comfortable moving forward and putting their letter of credit um, at risk and because in, in continue to move forward with the, the design of these various projects. I think the city of Grand Forks, we're gonna be enlightened too. Uh, if we go through the design process to, so that we can discover if there's any concerns or issues we have, whether that's with the industrial um, pump station, whether that's with the raw water supply line, um, whether it's with the sanitary sewer systems that we're working on. So a lot of those projects certainly relate to Fufang, but it also relates to industrial development in that area. And I think it's gonna be really important for us to discover if there are any flaws in our thinking as we work through the various designs and studies. So. Um, we are encouraging you to continue to move forward. And as noted on tonight's agenda, you have uh, item 5.7 and 5.8 relate to the wastewater treatment plant. We are asking you to, to continue to move forward with um, those design works and um, refining those projects. 5.9 on the agenda is related to the water main and that is more related to the annexation area. Um, Item 5.10, Mr. Spicer was up here talking about the stormwater pond. And again, that relates to the entire annexation area to include Fufang. And then there's under 5.11, there's A, B, C, and D. And those relate to the task orders. Um, 5.11A relates to that industrial um, pump station number 50 that I spoke of in Forest Main. Again, we're, that's primarily gonna serve Fufang, but it's also longer term gonna serve that larger industrial area. We are asking you to continue uh, to work, move forward with design on those. Um, 511B is that water main, and again, that's to, to fulfill the, the entire annexation area. Um, item C is the raw water supply. Again, you've already approved under the raw water supply, you've approved us moving forward with the intake improvements, you've approved us moving forward with design on the pump station, and this would be more for the raw water lines. Again, we're, uh, we're asking you to continue to move forward so that we can continue in the design process in that. And then finally, the sanitary sewer force main um, related to lift station 50. Again, that's related to that industrial pump station. We're asking you for us to continue with the design so that um, we can really hone in and make sure there are no, no flaws in, in how we're moving forward. Mr. Spicer early brought up um, and I think he has stated that you know we, we don't want a and we don't need a um, 
a stormwater pond. And so as we move forward with additional developments, we did say that we would move forward with this annexation area. There are uh, entities like SNS that would like to grow and expand and they, they need that stormwater pond to develop. As you recall, the city council did, um, did say that um, um, if Fufang moves forward, there would be no assessments other than to Fufang. If Fufang project doesn't move forward, there would be adjacent um, um, assessments regarding the stormwater pond. That's how this city council approved those. I just want to highlight also on the, the wastewater collection system, the, this city council did approve it with 0% special assessments to the adjacent property owners. Um, regarding the water main that we are going to ask um, the state of North Dakota to pay 60% of that, that also will be, have no special assessment to the, uh, to the adjacent annexation area. Um, so there, there are a lot of the utilities. Um, I would say, you know, the, the stormwater pond is needed long term, not only for Fufang, but the adjacent area. But if Fufang project moves forward, USA project moves forward, there will be no assessments to the adjacent property owners uh, as we move forward. Again, time will tell uh, regarding these um, specific questions. And maybe, Mayor, I'll put a period on there and I'll ask Mr. Shudarash, um, Cheryl, sure, if we could, um, so we can see the see the people take down the presentation. And then I would ask Eric to give us an update and, and give us some of his sense of wanting us to continue on on the design process. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Garcia and the uh, City Council. Uh, just a brief update, you know, as uh, you know, Mr. Field has shared, I believe with previous council meetings, we've been having a, a bi-weekly uh, um, you know, uh, project team meeting with the city to, to keep them updated. As far as the uh, where we're at in the process, we're uh, currently doing the, the master and the site planning work uh, you know, as required with the city processes as part of that. We've done a number of uh, the site testing, so the, the topographic testing, um, our surveys, the geotech testing. Uh, we're also uh, currently getting out a package for uh, lay down area access roads um, in preparation for uh, construction in the spring. Uh, air permits progressing. We have uh, yeah, we have that back from uh, from HDR. We're just going through the internal review and verification of it, and then we'll uh, we'll share with the city and uh, get ready for the submittal. Uh, continue with the, the basic engineering package and starting to, to engage with the, the equipment suppliers. Um, also, as Todd um, you know, mentioned, where uh, we, we have asked that the, the work order still progress as um, you know, the project timeline, I think for, for both of us, the, uh, the city and um, you know, ourselves, uh, we're looking at that spring timeline to really start construction and there's a number of steps you know, in preparation of that, and that can be done uh, really in parallel that that prep work, the design work, uh, prior to any construction. While we continue to uh, to work through uh, the, the CPS process and uh, cooperate with them on on that matter. Mayor Bochinski, because that's what we have for an update on the infrastructure component part. If there's any questions on that, and then finally. Um, We'd ask Mr. Bearing to give us some updates on raw water supply uh, if there's no further questions on that presentation. Well, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Shu? I guess my first question would be on the um, <clears throat> CFIUS. Are you guys planning to, to cooperate and continue with a further uh, deeper dive, deeper uh, review from them? Uh, that was what Mr. Kimball had, uh, had mentioned earlier. Is that your plan to go forward with that? You know, we're currently engaged with CPS. Our council's been, you know, they connected with them Friday, today. So we're, we're talking to them with, um, you know, really just determining, you know, next steps and, and how to, um, you know, properly, you, you know, I guess, uh, address the, the uh, concerns that were, or I guess, next steps that were outlined in, in the letter received last week. And Mr. Kimball did mention, you know, this, this, could be 90 days, it could be months, depending upon that. I mean, if, if that is the case, you do realize that construction may be continue to be paused until we can uh, get that answer back from CFIUS. So even if the design work happens, these timelines that we've got now may be extended further. I mean, you guys understand that? 
Yeah, we understand that. Anybody got any other questions for Mr. Shooter Ash? It, it, Mayor, oh, yeah. just, just so I'm clear, the, the lawyers are talking, but is there a clear direction they will or won't continue? Yeah, do you, yeah, I guess just for a clear answer there, Mr. Shooter Ash, do you intend to follow up and, and respond to the letter that you're, you're going to um, cooperate and give more information? I mean, are you, can you give us that commitment or were you, were I, more, I guess more clarity on that would help? Yeah, we're still getting information from CPS on what was outlined in that letter. So I, mean, I, I can't give a definitive answer until we, we get more information from CPS as we, um, you know, as we talk to them about it this, you know, this week. I mean, we, we have to respond here in you know, the next couple of days, and, and we intend to do so, but we also need to you know, understand um, what was outlined in the letter and to make sure that we proceed in a, in a manner that uh, you know they expect and then you can i guess continue to, to share that information if that's uh, as you go forward as your decisions made share that and we can disseminate that to the, the council and the public absolutely we, as soon as we um you know make any steps we'll, we'll be sharing that with uh, the city and the city council uh, mr. I, I have one just one other question for mr Phelan. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Shooter, actually, his honor? Ms. Sosowski, please. It would be great if you would grace us with your presence here at some of these meetings, sir. Any response, Mr. Shooter, Ash? She asked if you could come to some of the meetings, if you could make that work, people would appreciate it. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I mean, we, I plan to, to join meetings. I mean, as, as you're aware, in the city council, you know, I have participated in several of the meetings, and you know, through the the winter, the spring, um, and th and through this process. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Shoot. Any further questions for him? All right. Moving back to Mr. Field. I know Mr. Bean had a question for you, so. Yeah, Mr. Field. Thank you, Mr. Shooter. Ash. I understand the storm holding ponds, like you explained it. Um, and that they would be required with the annexation. Will there be some potential modifications, whatever needed, if Fufung didn't come because the size of the pond would be for the entire development, or does that happen regardless? Mayor Wachinski and uh, members of City Council, you know, we talked about this, and, and what I've been told is, and I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Grasser, I think you're back there, aren't you? Mr. Grasser, he recommended that regardless if Fufang would come or not, he, he recommended that we should do the entire pond um, was his recommendation regarding the size. You know, I talked about the size of the wastewater treatment plant. Maybe maybe that we could, uh, but Mr. Grasser thought it would be best to build it all, and I'll have, I'll have him explain um, the reasons why on that. Good evening, Mayor and uh, Ken Vian. The, uh, basically, the, the area that we annexed, if you look at the, the area that's serving the pond, roughly half of the area that's, that's going into the pond is, is the Fufong property. The other half is, are the businesses along Highway 81, but also including all the right-of-way that goes along with 81 Mill Road, 30th Avenue, 33rd Avenue, th those various. Those right-of-ways probably make up another, I'm going to say, 20 or 25 percent you know, the total contributing area. So when you're in there building a pond, efficiency of, of size and operation kind of dictate that you, you, you know, you do as, as much as you can while you're there. Once you build a pond, if you have to come back and try to expand it while it's got water in it, while it's operating, much more expensive to try to come back and build that out in, out in phases. So that's basically the reason we're looking at, uh, you know, you're gonna be building out three quarters of the pond um, you know, for the for the for the Fufang site in the in the eighty one right away. One just follow up. Is there an issue also with timing of the year for building the pond? Yeah, the pond is. We we found that you know in in our country we can get very very wet periods of time. We can get very dry periods of time. We get these wet periods of time. You're with a pond. You're you're, you're digging a big hole in the ground basically. So if you do that during the uh, when the groundwater is high, when it's raining, it's very much more difficult to get that 
built just because you're working in the mud all the time. Um, we found over time, because we've built lots and lots of ponds all over town over the last number of years, as you re these are required to meet our stormwater discharge requirements. It's a uh, federal requirement passed to the state, passed down to us. Um, so that's the reason we've done a lot of them. Um, and pardon my digression, but I'll get back to the original question. So to, uh, we found that the most efficient way of building the pond is, is, to, is to bid them out basically during the winter months, early winter months. And the reason for that is, is the ground is starting to freeze. So the ground gets stiff, it starts to freeze. You can actually run your, your equipment then on top of that, you know, the frost and the frozen ground and not get bogged down in the mud. Your groundwater tables are lower, you're not getting rain. So again, it's, it, we found it's, it's really more efficient. You can't control your construction schedule very, very well if you're building them in the summertime because Mother Nature is just going to dictate, you know, what you're able to do. Uh, President Sandy. As, uh, Jim, Mr. Grass, just a quick follow-up. As just not necessarily city policy, but more as a general rule, we have been going to larger, more regional ponds rather than more smaller ponds, purely for maintenance and economies of scale, correct? Correct. Again, yeah. you, you know, one concentrating on one larger pond is easier than if you break that up right. into you know five six eight ten so this ponds. isn't that this isn't an abnormal pond that we're talking about building. no we encourage larger size ponds um, our policies our cost share policies we pay a higher share on larger ponds than we do on smaller ponds so we actually encourage a larger regional concept when we build the ponds thank you anything further all right thank you mr grasser Mayor, Mayor Bertuski, before I ask Mr. Um, Buren to come up, I also wanted to highlight, and I forgot, is that we did have a, a state uh, funding meeting last week with the various state agencies that uh, touch water-related programs and had a very good uh, virtual meeting. We're, we're intending to have an in-person meeting later in, in uh, September. And another reason to move, keep moving forward with design is that the, the state of North Dakota is going to receive various federal funds. And so we're working with them on the various categories, whether it's with the State Water Commission or Department of Environmental Quality or the Bank of North Dakota or Public Finance Authority. Anyway, the state has this one-stop shop, and so we're working through all the various infrastructure components related to water, and that, and we say water, drinking water, raw water, wastewater, storm water. We're trying to find the best programs for us to, to meet the requirements. And so we had a, a good initial meeting last week. And I think as we work through the fall, the state's going to know more and more of the rules and, and how we can fit into the various categories. So we did have a good initial meeting and with city staff, uh, our consultants, and with the various state agencies. And, and they're certainly willing to help us and support us. And so more to come as we work through the design and, and all the various funding categories with that, too. Uh, next, we did attach uh, Mayor Bochensky as uh, the last time Mr. Bearing was here talking about raw water. Uh, the mayor asked Mr. Bearing to follow up with some questions that he had and, and uh, in the event of trying to be as transparent as possible and share the information that we have. Uh, we asked Mr. Bearing if he could kind of update us on the raw water supply that's uh, come up uh, from time to time. So thanks, Steve. Thanks, Todd, Mayor Paczynski, uh, President Sandy, members of the council, Steve Burian with Burian Associates. I've been before you several times to talk about <coughs> water supply for the city of Grand Forks as it relates to the Red River Valley Water Supply Project. And in talking to Mayor Bachinski, although we went through a lot of detailed assumptions and a lot of detailed models, sometimes the results from that aren't as intuitive as one would hope. And so the mayor had a very specific question for me. He asked that if you look at the period from January 1st of 1951, so that would be the period after which Baldville Dam was built, which is the dam at Valley City, which is your last recourse of water right now, prior to the Red River Valley Water Supply Project and looking present to the present, which is about 70, 71 years or 26,000 days, he wanted to know how many times the flow in the river reached 204 CFS, how many days, and that 204, the significance of that is that would be the time where the 10 CFS for um, the uh, Fu Fung Project ends up being 5% of the demand. And so to specifically look at the, the mayor's question, there would have been 194 days in that 71 year period, or 0.74% of the time when there would only have been, if you look at the Fufang demands, you'd still have 95% of the river available for other uses or else flow in the river. 
Um, being engineers, we, we did give him a table from 1% up to 10% so he could look at a, a variety of data. And then we also felt it would be important to understand how frequent that 204 CFS might occur. And over that 71 year period or those 26,000 days approximately, it was less than the first one, one percentile or the first percentile. And so you'd have less than one in a hundred chance for that to take place over that 71 day period, 71 year period. I'd be glad to answer any questions on that as well as any questions you might have on previous discussions. They have that chart. Is that chart, can that be brought up or is it, I don't know where you guys are on. So the specific question that you asked was at the top, Mayor Baczynski, and that addresses that. And then you can see that this is the table of various percentiles from where, where what percent Fufang would represent of the flow in the river. Would Fufang ever represent 10% over that 71 year period? It, it, there's a zero times they would ever do that. How many times would it represent 1%? There the frequency jumps up to 1,000 days over that. Or, Five, 6,000 days over that course of record. And as I was describing earlier, when you look at that 204 CFS that you asked about, you could see at the bottom of this graph, this table, that that's lower than the first percentile of the data over that 71 year period. Uh, maybe just for color, I'll also add, uh, nobody asked this question. I did several years ago do a similar work, piece of work for the city of Fargo when they looked at adding the Thorolfsen ethanol plant and we had to justify um, allowing that facility to move forward. And we worked with the, what was, Department of Water Resources was the State Water Commission at the time. And they only required us to look back 20 years when they did that analysis. And then we presented that 20 years to um, Thorolfsen and they had to make the risk decision from there. But the Water Commission was willing to make a permit based on a, give us a permit based on a 20 year analysis and so recognize this would be 70 years rather than 20 years. Thank you, Mr. Burian. Any questions for Mr. Burian? <clears throat> Mr. Veen, please. The Thorolson plant gets their water as wastewater, right? Mayor Baczynski, Council Member V, and yes, the, in, far, in that case, they run the water through the city of Fargo's water plant, run it through the city, run it through the wastewater plant, retreat it with dual membranes and then send it out in a pipeline to near Castleton for use there. But it is Fargo's wastewater yeah. as the source, not, not uh, raw water from the river or, um, and, this, and Mr. Burian, You've been working on the Red River Valley Water Supply Project almost as long as I have. We've done numerous studies. Garrison Diversion has spent 20 to $30 million working with the Bureau of Reclamation, identifying the issues of water, water shortage and water availability. In fact, the State Water Commission just came out with a new map of water availability that should be available here in the Red River, or across the whole state, I guess, is that's in there. Which I've actually updated, but yeah. Yeah, and, that, and there is that shortage. So what I've seen is flood protection projects are based on peak flows. Drought contingency drought flows are based on low flows, not average flows or, or even the last 20 years. The risks of running out of water and the impacts of running out of water are too significant to try to be um, maybe overly con or too conservative on it. You need to be conservative. You need to look at history. You need, need to be able to look at what those impacts have because we have, and you and you put together the report, a, a report that shows in a 30 style drought, we have, and it came out of your mouth, significant water shortages. So is that, is that a question or is, no, that, is that no, a statement? No, that's true. That's true. I mean, we've had that. We've been studying this. We've been implementing this for years. So and, and now we're looking at statistics based on a arbitrary period of time. So Mayor Baczynski, um, Council Mayor Vian, you know, I think there's, 
there's different lenses at which to look at this, and this is just fact. This isn't, there isn't no gerrymandering. It's, we picked the 70 year period objectively because it's since Spalding Hill Dam was built. You could pick a different period, but recognize it's much, much, much longer than other analyses I've done. If you're asking me, do I think in any way, shape, or form, does this change the necessity for the city of Grand Forks to fully support and move forward with the Red River Water Supply Project, I will say emphatically no. Conversely, can this data be used by either the city of Grand Forks or Fufeng to understand that for a majority of the time, Grand Forks should be in a really good position to serve Fufeng with water until the Red River Valley Water Supply Project is completed? I think this does suggest that there's some potential for that. I think you're right. I mean, you can say that there is the potential. Do we have any agreement from Fufang on anything like this? Well, I would think then this, if you, I've heard, and I'm not tied into that intimately, as you work on your utility agreements, I would think this is the type of data that you would use to recognize beyond the city's normal drought contingency plan if you needed to do additional containment of industrial demands, this could be a tool to show when that frequency might exist and how you would go about doing that. Mm -hmm. well, I, I'll just go on the record and say I think the risk is too high. I don't think that this, these numbers haven't changed my mind one bit. Um, the risk is too high for? Pardon? For? For the fact that we have significant water shortages and, and, and it was stated in the earlier report that the water even behind Bald Hill Dam, of course that's if it's available, cuts that water supply in half from two years to one year. Anything further for Mr. Perrin? All right, thank you, Mr. Yes, Brand. Thank you. Mr. Fielding, did you have anything else? That's it for this evening, other than moving forward to the action items. And uh, we're asking for no action items to be pulled from administration. All right, we've got uh, item four public hearings and second readings and ordinances. There are none, so we'll move on to five action items. So, any council members wishing to pull any items on under the action items, please? What's that? Yeah. Five seven five eight five ten. And five eleven. Thank you. The other items. The pork to be pulled. Yeah. Um, five eleven A, C, and D. Yeah, we've got all okay, five eleven. Yep. So we got five seven five eight five ten and five eleven being pulled, currently. Give you a chance to look through. All right, so we're looking for a motion items 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, 5.9, um, to include those multiple parts. So we're looking, we got a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Got a second. A motion from President Sandy, second from uh, Ms. Lonsky. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. This motion is carried unanimously. It's around the 5.7. 5.7, construction man manager at risk, uh, pre-construction pre services agreement for city project 8483, water treatment facility improvements and resolution of applicant. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Oskowski, do you have any other, any comments regarding that or any questions to follow up? Okay. Anything further? Got a motion to approve 5.7. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, uh, second from Kavami online. Uh, any further co any further uh, comments? It's seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. No. So we got two no's, four two. I think we should let the record show that Mr. Weigel has been cut off. He's tested oh. and asked if Cheryl can put him back in. Sounds good. So let's leave that as a three two as right a now. Didn't he? I thought he was just on. 
All right, Ms. Simeone, if you can see if you can get uh, Councilmember Weigel back connected. Otherwise, we've got a 3 2 with Osowski and Veen dissenting. So 5.8 is the final design and bidding engineering services agreement for city project 8569 Grand Forks water treatment facility phase two design and reimbursement resolution. All right, thank you. Again, was there any further discussion to that item? All right. Got a motion to approve from President Sandy. Do we have a second? Second. <laughs> uh, a second from Weigel online. Any further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion carries four to two with Veen and Osowski dissenting. 5.10 plans and specs for Project 8485, District 589, Stormwater Pond for Highway 81, and Associated Area and Reimbursement Resolution. All right, thank you. Any further comment on that item? All right, seeing none, we got a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. A second from Kravami, motion from President Sandy. Seeing no further comment, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. We've got uh, five to one with Osowski dissenting. 5.11 is engineering task orders uh, A through D. All right, I guess we'll look. Any further comments on item 5.11? Yep. Is there anyone that wants to take these separately or can we take them all as one? I'll, I'll make a motion for all of them together, but if I, I think we separate them. Okay. I'll move approval of 511A. All right. We got a motion for 511A. Do we have a second for 511A? Motion to approve. Second. All right. We'll take, um, we'll take Alinsky's second there. Um, any further comments on 511A? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. What to you was there? Ms. Ocelsi, did you dissent on that one too? Yeah. Okay. Ms. Ocelsi, Mr. Green dissent, four to two vote. I can read in B if you want. Okay, please. In B then is Project 8575, District 594, Water Main for Peony Addition and Highway 81 Area <coughs> Phase 1. All right, thank you. Any further comments on item 5.11B? Seeing that, we'd be mo looking for a motion. No approval. We got a motion. We'll take Danny. We'll give you a break, President Sandy. Um, any? Uh, we got a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Kavami. Seeing no further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Got five to one with uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Oselsky dissenting. And then C is the Project 8578 raw water supply. Same thing, any further comments? That item seeing none, we have a motion. <clears throat> Got a motion from President Sandy, do we have a second? Second. Got a second from, uh, we'll take Mr. Weigel, second. Seeing no further comment, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. We've got four to two with Veen and Osowski dissenting. ND Project 8580 Sanitary Force Main from lift station number 50 to North 42nd Street. All right, one more time. Any comment on the item? All right, seeing none, we have a motion on the item. Got a motion from President Sandy. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Kavami. Seeing no further comment, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. We got four to two with Osowski and being dissenting. All right, moving on to six information items. 6.1 is your statement of cha changes in cash balances of July 31st. Thank you. Item seven, approval of minutes and bills. And 7.1 is the vendor list and engineer's estimate as is presented. All right, we've got a, a motion to approve the vendor list and engineer's estimate. Bills, got a motion for President Sandy and a second for Mr. Weigel. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. And 7.2 is minutes from April 18th. Motion to approve as is. Got a motion from President Sandy. Do we have a second? 
To approve the minutes, Ms. Lonsky approves the minutes. There are seconds to that motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, the minutes are approved unanimously. Um, Mr. Phelan, eight city administrator comments. Any comments this evening? No, thank you, Mayor. All right, we're moving on to nine mayor and council member comments. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Weigel. Any comments this evening, council member Weigel? Uh, just briefly, Mayor, uh, thank you again for all your work with uh, Back the Badge um, Ride. I think it was a great event, great turnout, and uh, I know the law enforcement community uh, enjoyed your support. Thank you, Mr. Weigel. Uh, Ms. Wasowski, any comments this evening? No comments. Uh, Mr. Weber, we got Ms. Uh, Ms. Lonsky, any comments? All right, Mr. Kalami, any comments this evening? No, thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Veen, any comments? Oops, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> there would be one request on my, half, my, on my behalf. There was a lot of information given out tonight, and there were presentations that were made here, um, but so little time to react to it when I see it for the first time and then have to vote on it or try to respond to it. If we could have some of those done during the Committee of the Whole meeting so we'd have the time to be able to digest it, it would certainly be helpful for me to be able to look at that. Um, just my yeah. Thank my you, request. Mr. Feeling you think you can uh, handle that? Yeah. Okay, we got us. Mr. Sandy. Any comments this evening? Mr. Mayor, there were several during council or uh, citizen comments. There were several questions asked, and I, I think it would only take uh, a couple minutes to to answer a few of those questions. I think. It, some of the people are still here and, and it might make it easier. I think uh, there was a question asked about why the Corinto property wasn't annexed. Mr. Gosted, can you can you provide a quick rundown as to why they weren't part of the annexation? Because there's an agreement that uh, you can annex that property um, without their their consent. Um, there is it precludes it. Right. You can respond again, but there's an annexation agreement upon any transfer of that land or a death or anything, then that would automatically be annexed. Otherwise, they would need to sell it to another party. Is that correct? There is there is an agreement that precludes the annexation of that parcel. Right, which is why they were not included as part of this annexation area. But uh, there are triggers that will trigger the annexation either whenever whenever ever they sell the property or if they I don't. I think I, if if there's a transfer of the property, which could be a sale or some yeah, other means. Well, yes. So uh, at at some point in the future, they will automatically be annexed into the city. I'm not sure it's an automatic trigger, but it the the barrier for, for annexation would go away. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so, when, so excuse me, ma'am. You're you're disrupt. Excuse me, ma'am. You are disrupting the meeting, please, ma'am, sir, please. Sir, please. Uh, Mr. Sandy, please continue. I'm, this is your I'm, time. I'm trying to get questions answered that were asked tonight, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there was a comment and a, a question about why the council didn't follow planning and zoning's annexation recommendation. Mr. Gostad, I know the answer of why we didn't. Do you recall? And if you don't, I'm happy to, to, to say that. I do, uh, because there, there was the planning and zoning aspect to look into the issue of a contingent annexation. Um, I briefed the planning and zoning that I didn't believe based upon the case law and the, the, that I had read that you could do a contingent annexation. There were other pragmatic issues about what would be the triggering event, who would make the decision. Um, if you go back to the planning and zoning commission, I went through a series of of reasons why that the contingent annexation would not be appropriate right and they ultimately voted to move the annexation forward correct without the contingency that is my understanding correct. and then the city council actually supported what they had voted for that there was no change in what the planning and zoning what it came out from planning that, and zoning. that is a hundred percent correct um, Someone mentioned raw water and raw water used for food products and byproducts that are sent to the mm -hmm. land, landfill and that raw water can't be used for food products. I think uh, Mr. Shooterash is on, but correct me if I'm wrong. Although they are taking raw water to their facility, they aren't using raw water in the production of anything. I believe they're creating their own water treatment plant on their site and treating the water prior to using it. But don't take my word for it. Perhaps Mr. Shooter Ash or Mr. Phelan wants I, to confirm I would, that. I would defer to Mr. Shooter Ash and what they're planning to do once they receive Once the they water. receive the raw water. Thank you. Hopefully Mr. Shooter Ash is 
Yeah, it looks like yeah. you're muted. Yeah, please. Mr. Sandy, that's correct. We use a, a lot of different qualities of water in our plants, so we bring in the raw water and we treat it up to uh, the different types of quality we need for different parts of the process. Thank you, Mr. Shooter Ash. And therefore, any byproducts uh, wouldn't fall under the raw water categories because they would be treated water. Thank you, uh, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate it, Ms. Gustad. Thank you for for all of your uh, your openness, Mr. Shooter Ash. I really appreciate you coming uh, coming on today, and we'll uh, look forward to seeing you here in Council Chambers again sometime soon. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, President Sandy. Just want to thank everybody for coming. Um, again, we do appreciate the comments every every council council meeting. So thank you again. Um, with that, I would be looking uh, for a motion to adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn and a second from Ms. Oselski. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, aye. same sign. We are adjourned. <laughs>